Several swimmers were attacked by sharks last Friday. This happened in Walton County. The first attack happened on Friday afternoon when a 45 year old woman was bitten by a shark. She was rushed to the hospital with serious injuries and lost part of her left arm. About an hour and a half later, two teenage girls were bitten by sharks at Seacrest Beach here. They were taken to a hospital with flesh wounds and are expected to be okay. So, the question is, what could be driving these sharks close to shore this time of year? Dr. Nab, former director of the National Hurricane Center, longtime Florida resident. We, we're, we talk a lot about changing sea surface temperatures, rising sea surface temperatures, and how that can affect migratory patterns or feeding grounds for sharks, and we just happen to be in their way. Yeah, and, you know, I've spent plenty of time in the water on the Florida Panhandle coast, the southwest coast, the east coast. Mm -hmm. And I, the only time I ever saw a shark was on the east coast, off the Palm Beach County coast. Mm -hmm. Never saw them in the Florida Panhandle. And I, my first thought when this happened was, I wonder if compared to, you know, like when I was in grad school, you know, a few decades ago, sea surface temperatures are just warmer now mm -hmm, than right. they used to be. And the Florida Panhandle is built up a lot more, so there's more people. So I think, you know, the, it, it's hard to, you know, as we talked to our guest earlier, hard to identify a trend in actual incidents like this on the Florida Panhandle coast, but I gotta believe that more people in the water right. and sharks responding in a variety of ways to warmer sea surface temperatures whether it changes where they spend their time, their metabolism. I, I, I worry that this could happen more going forward. Let me ask you a question about like the Florida mentality. I, I assume, I don't know this to be the case, you, you, would, you would know better. Are Floridians very aware of shark danger and a little bit more cautious of the water as opposed to tourists that may be there who want to do nothing but jump in the water? I would say the answer to that is probably no. Mm -hmm. I, 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 my experience has been that not many people spend much time thinking about a shark risk because mm -hmm. it is a pretty rare occurrence. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't something that's been happening with a greatly increasing frequency, but I do worry that that could change. Albeit your odds of being bitten by a shark are really, really low, but what in your mind can we do as beachgoers to reduce our risk? Oh, one of the main things that I've always known for, since I was a kid going to the beach in Florida is if you have any kind of cut, abrasion, don't stay in the water, don't go into the water because... They sense that. Yeah, because the, their sense will change and they might perceive you differently if there's blood or cut or something. That's at least one thing that you can do differently. And also, you know, just be more aware of your surroundings because sure. the water is usually clear enough to see what's in the water that day before you get in and talk to the lifeguard every time you arrive on a beach. You had mentioned warming uh, sea temperatures, right? We know this to be a fact and they've, they've come up in the Gulf of Mexico as well where this attack occurred. Some sharks, and we, we learned this from Alabama Department of Natural Resources, some sharks appear to like the warmer weather, like the bull shark, which mm -hmm. can be a very aggressive shark, and they've noticed that an uptick in the number of population around the Mobile area, so you wonder if that is increasing along a lot of the northern Gulf Coast now. And you also got to consider that these way warmer than average waters the last couple years are affecting all different kinds of marine life. It's mm -hmm. affecting the coral reefs. It's got to be changing where what type of food is located for every creature in the Gulf and Atlantic Ocean to eat. So it, it's got to be changing their behavior in ways we don't fully understand, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't surprise us if behaviors start changing. Again, the best thing we can do is maybe you just, you put your toes in, in the water, maybe that's it, Talk, but you mentioned it. Talk to the lifeguards. Yes. And also keep in mind, they've got an elevated perch, right. generally speaking. They can, they've got a lot better view of the water than you do down low. They're looking at their ocean every day. They mm -hmm. see what's different that day. They see what people have been encountering or not encountering out in the water. They can see signs of things that you wouldn't think of. You're going there to have fun and relax. They are there, the lifeguards, to do a job, and that's to keep you safe. Let's rely on them. When the purple flag is flying at the beach, that's the marine danger, which could be sharks, Jellyfish, Jellyfish dingray, algae. Uh, algae, any of yep. those things. That generally means do not go in the water. Yeah, red or purple, it's a good day to stay out of the water.